Hey everyone, welcome back to the Leadership Locker. Quick intro here. You know we do video, but that is just a piece of what we do. Now, when people look at video in terms of content creation for their personal brand or their organization's brand, it looks like a bear, but so many things can trickle down from that. So when you think about all the investments that are made in, I would say, areas that have not proven to be as effective, then I really think it's worth listening to this podcast to kind of get a sense of how it can play out if you do prioritize the medium that is winning the most. As you know, Rich Cardona Media is the sponsor of this podcast. Hello. We take care of so much of your content creation for you. We film it, we edit it, we distribute it. We come up with content strategy. We help you come up with titles, all of these good things. So that way you don't have to. However, there is a form of collaboration here in which is you're going to have to invest some time on the platform. So if you feel that you would love so much taken off your plate and that's why you're not actually, you know, relevant or current on the platform and that you could commit about 10 to 20 minutes a day on the platform, just getting situated, responding to comments, making comments on other people's content, then I promise you, we are gonna be the people that are gonna help you elevate your brand quick, fast, and in a hurry, and result in having a reputation as someone who people wanna do business with. So definitely let us know. You can email us at rich at richcardonamedia.com or eliza at richcardonamedia.com. Let's get to the show. Welcome to the Leadership Blocker featuring Rich Cardona and Eliza Delgado. (laughs) We're here to uh, help professionals understand their craft, understand our craft and provide some solutions and and knowledge along the way. So this episode is sponsored by Rob Renz, State Farm agent here in Wilmington, North Carolina. He's an excellent human being, one of our favorite people ever. Super altruistic, motivated to serve. Even if it's not a client here locally, he'll find a way to give you the information you need to get the proper coverage and for the right price. Yeah, insurance is boring. Dude, man. It sucks. It's it's super awful, but (laughs) Rob is exceptional at breaking it down. He certainly garnered a lot of interest in people Mm re-examining, should I be working with who I have and and all the the possible things that could come of it if they change your policies. Right. We're going to talk today about a little bit about video. I try not to go too ridiculous about video because it's low-hanging fruit for me. However... I have to talk about it because of an instance that happened last week. I'm in a marketing group on Facebook and someone straight up in this Facebook of marketers was like, hey, looking for someone who could help with LinkedIn content creation. I'm like, ding. Like I was like, I'm just going to pull over and uh, go ahead and hit them up. So I wrote uh, as a comment, a bunch of people were like, DM me, DM me. I'm like, ain't no one in here does what we do. So I wrote a comment. I'm like, that's exactly what we do. We do this, this, and this. And the person wrote, you said, we, I'm looking for more like a freelancer type thing. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, we're a boutique firm. This is what we do. We film and distribute content. And the thing that made this person go like, oh my God, was I was like, in as little as an hour a month, you could have an hour worth of content, film, edited, and distributed. Now, you you kind of clarified that like because we are the way we are, there is more than that because we have calls two times a month to make sure that they're on track and, mm-hmm. and setting goals and, and whatever. But ultimately, very, very low amount of time for the month for them. Now, the person said, it's video. Video is only part of the strategy. Mm. And I was kind of, I don't want to say offended, but I was like, how are you missing this here? And and what I mean by that, and, and let me let me say this in a non condescending way because I don't mean to be, is you want to do blogs as well? Okay, you want to do some cheesy shit images with some graphics on them and pretend that LinkedIn is Instagram? Okay. Oh, and I also mentioned when they mentioned content for the company page, I'm like, the CEO is the content, which is you. Yeah. So video is part of the strategy. Not all of it were the exact words. So here's what I have to say about that. Video wins. We, we know this. I've actually been getting less and less views on LinkedIn with my videos and much higher engagement recently. And we always talk about, I mean, come on, 
you just started really taking, like, getting on LinkedIn. You like to work behind the scenes and you've been getting messages left and right. Uh, all our clients, same thing happens. They're just getting a ton of messages. Video is extremely effective, whether it's visually like tangible or not. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we have the software that analyzes all our performance of our clients and it shows that it outperforms text posts. It outperforms image posts. So what I wanted to say, which I didn't follow up, uh, I, I gave them a one-cheater, but I wanted to say, start where you know you can win. Yep. Start where you know you can win. And I'm not telling you video has to be the only part of the strategy. And I broke it down a little bit and you and I had this discussion. So let's just be hypothetical here. Eliza, Yes. I can start with video, but that could go, I don't know, let's say we're advising someone. What would you say if I said, we will start with video, but if you want to continue to create content outside of video, here's what you could do. What would you say to that person? First of all, start with what your schedule is. Like, I mean, if you have a schedule and a cadence and a rhythm for what you want to go when, and then we're saying video is your t- going to be your top performer, your content piece and your content type is going to be video. So then start with what you want to be your heavy hitter, your subject matter, and then parse that out from your video content. Don't reverse engineer from a blog post and then create a video from your blog post. Start with your video and then create your blog posts and your static imagery and all those other things derived from the content that performed the best already, right? So I think a lot of people start with, I'm going to write an article and I'm going to break that article up into you know snippets and quotes and I'm going to quote myself and I'm going to create a cool graphic with a picture of myself and a really cool quote from it. Yeah. And then I'm going to record a video from that content because I believe the quote is the best. No, start with the video. Start with the video and then see, you know, like let it fly, put it out there and then see what performs the best and then take previous two weeks of your video content, look at what was the highest performer, write your content from that. So some of that means being behind and more reactive rather than proactive. But I think sometimes you have to see how stuff performs. Like I would never want to be in front of the gate and say things like, I believe without any data, I believe that headphones are vitally important for good audio. Is it? I don't know. But could the data tell me something different if I made a video about it and I said, hey, this is why headphones could be helpful for you. These three key points. And this is how I know that, right? Mm -hmm. And then you wait and see how people respond to that. If you're going to do a series on video or on headphones, right? Then you could say, I don't know, I'm going to take the best subject matter from that series and then create additional content from it. Of course. So there's, there's a lot of ways to be more efficient with your content. And video is certainly one aspect of it. But you start with the highest performer first. And just to be clear, like I said at the beginning, of course I advocate for video, but that's not all we advocate for. So right. if if a small business came to us and they wanted to talk about plans for mm-hmm. their other platforms, we can certainly give them some guidance in that direction as well. But I think the main thing is mm-hmm. you feel like you have to hit all these little different wickets. Yeah. Like you don't. Let's just talk about one of our clients, right? Sure. We literally just had a conversation. Yeah. And before he came on board, he wrote articles left mm. and right every week. Long, long articles. Very informative, very high level, very educational. Yeah. And because it was his only content type, it performed really well, right? The only content type. And now that he's introduced video, he's realized how much easier video is to even create and to distribute. And he recognized how much time was going into creating the article pieces and how much he hated it. And he's recalibrated to, I don't need to be posting an article every week. It doesn't get me the same amount of traction. Uh, It doesn't even get me the traction that I want. So he's moved back from, you know, once a week to now twice a week. And maybe once a month is on the table because the video content is outperforming. So I, I think some of it is balancing time and effort as well as impact. The biggest part of that conversation was, I didn't know he hated writing and he thought it was the biggest time suck. Yeah. So are you willing, because you feel like that's what you need to do, just throw yourself into this pit of agony to make this content? Yeah. Especially if it's just because you are a brand that relies on things and not people to project. And, you know, what you do, how you can serve, what problem you solve and all that other stuff. So mm-hmm. he never would have known unless he tried something else for a substantial amount of time right. that I actually prefer this. And look, 
to be unbelievably transparent, it hasn't hit yet yeah. on, the, on the video side. This is kind of an anomaly for us uh, in, in a way, but we had the conversation. I'm like, dude, that's all we could ask for is that kind of transparency. Right. And if, if, if I mean, if he never explored that because he felt like, no, articles are definitely the way to go. I'm an academic and I'm a real professional guy and this is very high level. Then, and what was the other thing he said about the messages he was getting? He was saying, I'm getting messages being like, dude, you're all over. You're all over LinkedIn. He's getting inquiries, et cetera. And it's, it's, a, it's a ramp up, sure, for mm-hmm. sure. But start with what wins. Yeah. Just, it, it's not hard to look around the marketplace. What can you tell me is prioritized on every platform right now that's a social media platform? It's not, it's not graphics it's and it's not, not text. It's not. But you also can't measure your success by only having one type of content. Yes. Right? Like if you only did articles, which is what he did in this scenario, then clearly for him, that was success. He had some baseline of metrics to look at. Like, oh, I know I get this level of engagement because I do this. But he'd never done another type of content. Mm -hmm. And so you have to test different types of content for your platform. And for us, obviously, we're always going to advocate for video. But that doesn't mean it's exclusive of any other content type. So for our clients, if we say, okay, we have you on a schedule of your content for video, but the days off of your content schedule or your video content schedule, do your other pieces of content, write a text post, post a photo, do a graphic, whatever, whatever suits you in your overall content strategy, if you have one. But if you don't start with video, it's always going to be the winner or almost always. Almost Almost always. I'm, I'm glad you said that because you're right. You do need to be able to analyze the patterns and compare against other mediums. However, that doesn't mean you need to test everything simultaneously. Yes. You could a hundred percent be like, let's say you're me or us and just we're gonna go text only for a month and see what happens. Now that might be a little bit confusing for people because mm-hmm. this is what we do. Mm-hmm. But let's just say it's like okay, I gotta give it an honest shot. Yeah. I don't need to be testing that and images and gifts, which is starting to be huge. It's like ridiculous. And then yeah. carousel posts. I don't need to try all of it at once. Yeah. Because number one, at the end of that month, I may see results that I really enjoy. I may realize that I enjoyed it and I may realize that they enjoyed it. And then I go back to video and then I'm like, wow, I enjoy this. Not as much, but holy shit. Yeah. These are blowing up. Well, so I'll just take an example from my own LinkedIn content, right? I'm just now getting started with the content strategy. I haven't used video yet. I've only been Mm text-based, right? But the average of the posts that I've gotten is 3,000, 4,000, 6,000. So... That's just for text though. That doesn't, and that also doesn't guarantee that if I switch and when I switch to video, that those things are going to be 6,000, 7,000, 10,000 view pieces of content. It just means it's a different content type and it reaches a different type of audience in a different type of way. So, and it can be consumed easier. I don't, I don't know, but I can't base the effectiveness of video based, you know, on my, my text metrics. Absolutely. And we talk about this all the time. Metrics are not everything. It's the engagement rate and it's all the other things that come from it. So we can get really easily stuck on like, and we were talking, we're talking about this now of video is like the performer and it should be the performer because people consume it easier, but it's, not the be all end all. No, there are not. other things that do perform, and there's so many many variables. It's right? the tool, not the rule. It, that's exactly right. There's so many variables. There's nuance to everything. What the day and the time that you posted, the type of content in that content piece, the subject matter. It could have been supremely relevant on a Tuesday, but if you posted it on a Thursday, it's trash. Mm-hmm. So there's so many different things that contribute to a content piece hitting or missing that you can't hang your hat on one specific thing. So I'm going to go back to the original inquiry and we could bring this, bring this thing all the way home, which is I don't fault the person at all for believing that it's just a part of it. Yeah. But I do believe the approach was wrong in terms of content creation. Right. I believe the person was actually looking for a content strategy. Yeah. I don't think those things are reversible. Now, mm-hmm. you will hear us talk about quantity over quality in many ways. Quantity in terms of getting building up your connections, building mm-hmm. up your followers, building up uh, the amount of messages that you're taking in or putting out, whatever it may be, the amount of content that you're putting out, right. all that. Yes, of course you need to create, but there certainly needs to be a strategy behind it, which is, and again, what I posted this morning about in and out like they're known for their burgers. There's really not a lot of shit to order from in and out right? But then you go to Cheesecake Factory where Eliza gets undercooked chicken every time we go. Hey, uh, man. <laughs> it's 
I get free food for life. <laughs> yeah. uh, you go to Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> story. You're not, th- yeah, you're not thinking about the cheesecake, and then yeah. I'm overwhelmed by the menu. Although I always pick pretty much the same stuff every Chicken time. Chicken with no cheese, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get it with cheese. So the the question clearly illustrated good intent and the desire to have a presence. But if you want to have that presence without a strategy, you will put out random acts of content is what Sean Cannell likes to say. And when you do that, that is going to absolutely slow your ability to discern what actually works and what doesn't. So I would have rather heard selfishly like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try video for uh, three months. You know, like that's the kind of runway we like to give our clients. Like give us three months. Mm -hmm. You're going to see something in a month anyway, but give us three months. Mm -hmm. Uh, But content creation on its own doesn't mean jack shit. It's true. Now, we're going to wrap. And I, I'm going to tell people, if you need anything, if you have any questions for us, you could email Eliza at richcardonamedia.com or rich at richcardonamedia.com. But there's a caveat because Eliza, <laughs> during the break, was like, we can't just say that. Yeah. Hit me. I hate that question. Hit or me. I hate that phrase. All right. Because I think we as professionals, we say things like, let me know if you have any questions, especially for us in, in this space where we really want to educate and provide value and keep an open, literal open door policy to communication with people who are transitioning or navigating entrepreneurship or startups or even just going from one phase of their career to another. Sometimes you don't even know the right questions to ask. Yeah. And I think let me know the right question is disingenuous, not an in intent, but in actuality of you know what, someone listening might not even know what to ask or how to ask it or what string to pull on the sweater. This so, is why Eliza's here. <laughs> uh, but I think we we owe it to, you know, people listening or, you know, people that are in our network that might consume some of the content that we create of being more specific. So here are the things that we can answer questions on. Hit it. Okay. Video production. Oh, yeah. Solving your problems through personal branding. Yeah. Consulting. Mm-hmm. Branding consulting. Publishing. And a myriad of other things, including marketing. Shared voice is one I'm going to start pushing hard. Yeah, shared voice. And how do, how do you do that for your company? Yep. Uh, how do you implement it across your company? Um, there's all different kinds of ways that we can solve those things. We can have just real honest, hard conversations and help you get to somewhere. Transition. You yes. know, I talked the other day about, you know, burnout for me, what that looked like, what, what I had to do recalibrate is part of my story of, you know, like leaving the corporate world and doing consulting and, you know, going out on my own. And uh, you've done that in the military when you retired. And what did that look like navigating the next stage of your career? So you've done a really great job, of, co- of course, of telling your story and keeping the door open and, you know, and creating content. And certainly that is a way for people to engage of, oh, this is something I can ask questions to and react to. But when it comes to the podcast, when we say, let me know if you have any questions or shoot us any questions, those are the things that you could be asking us about. And we're happy to dive deeper. Or, you know, if you hear something that we just talked about and you're like, mm, this wasn't quite clear to me, let's talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm so grateful right right this second for, <laughs> for that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't peel that back. I'm like, it's a wrap. Yeah. That's, that's me. That's, that's um, you know, a horse who's smelling the barn, right? It's yeah. It's just kind of like, okay, I'm going to wrap up and I'll do my normal thing. And yeah. it's, it's not like that. Yeah. So um, that being said, definitely hit us up if you have any questions in those uh, categories. And if it's loosely related to one of those categories, give it a shot because I'm sure we could help in that regard as well. Yep. If you got anything from this, if you enjoyed hearing us go back and forth, uh, which is not meant to be she and I just talking to each other, it's meant for you to eavesdrop on thought processes and to gather information that can maybe help you make educated decisions. I know what it's like to be a small business owner Mm -hmm. and just to feel like, fuck, like, I don't know if this is going to take off. I I know all those feelings. So I think uh, the reason we're doing this is because I just feel like it's so important for you to hear some of the things that take place because I know we're not alone. I know we're not alone. We're not the only people having these conversations. So I would never waste time on a podcast if I didn't, uh, or uh, ask you to waste time on a podcast with me if we didn't think it was going to be a benefit. So that being said, if it helped, please take the time to, to subscribe or rate it or review it or to share it or whatever it may be. Thank you all so much for listening. We will see you on LinkedIn and everywhere else later. You have no clue how great it feels when people give you feedback on what you've presented. 
So if you have any for us, we would love to hear it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you feel compelled to leave a rating or review because this did help you in some way, shape, or form, then please do so because we want more people like you to hear what we have to say. And that will also drive the value of what we're able to bring. If we know more and more of the problems that are out there in the marketplace in terms of veteran entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, marketing, we are here to serve. So thanks again for spending time with us. We'll see you next time.